Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at some applications of linear equations, uh, or that is just word problems. Um, so we're going to try to follow these steps. We're going to define our variables. Uh, we're going to write an equation for the variables and then solve the equation. Uh, and then this is a good um, ACT tip as well, but make sure you answer the question. Uh, so answer the correct question. Don't just give the variable because sometimes you got to plug that back in and, and find the answer to the actual question. Um, as always, but especially with this video, make sure you pause um, to give yourself time to think uh, and then also to work ahead when possible too. Um, I'm going to try to work through these problems kind of quickly. Uh, so you'll definitely need to pause to give, your, give yourself time to think and, and make sure you're understanding stuff as we go. Okay, so number one says find three consecutive integers whose sum is 171. Okay, so you could, I mean, this is like a guess and check thing, right? You could have, you could just try um, adding three numbers in a row until you get to 171. Uh, instead, let's write a formula. Let's say X is the first integer. So X is the first integer. An integer is just, as you might know, um, it's just a number that's not a decimal, basically. It can be negative uh, or zero. And consecutive is in a row. So if X is the first one, then x plus 1 would be the second one, and x plus 2 would be the third one, adding 1 and adding 2. So our equation would be x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2. And those are all equal to 171. So then I have 1, 2, 3x's plus 3 is 171. Uh, subtract 3 and then divide by 3 to get x is 56. Now make sure we answer the question. So find three integers. So the integers are 56, 57, and 58. Okay, the next one, and go ahead and pause and try to do this one on your own for sure. Uh, the next one says that the smaller of two consecutive odd integers is subtracted from twice the larger one, the result is 13. Okay, so the smaller of two consecutive odd integers. So let's make the smaller one x. Say so that's the smaller number. And then if it's odd, it's going to be um, two away from it, right? Uh, two consecutive odd integers. So that would be x plus 2 would be the next one. So if the smaller of two consecutive odd integers is subtracted from twice the larger one. So twice the larger one would be 2 times x plus 2. And then I'm subtracting uh, the smaller one. And then that is equal to 13. And then pause this, solve, uh, distribute the 2, 2x two plus 4 uh, minus x is equal to 13. Um, that makes x plus 4 equal to 13, or when you subtract that, x must be equal to 9. Um, and so x is 9, and then the, find the integers, the next one must be 11, so 9 and 11. And anytime you want to try to check your work on these, you could plug things in and just make sure they work out. The smaller of two consecutive integers is subtracted from twice the larger one. So it'd be um, 22 twice the larger one minus 9 is that is that 13. And when you do 22 minus 9, you get 13. So that works out. Okay, this next one has to deal with a rectangle. It says the length of a rectangular backyard is 100 feet less than three times its width. So let's draw a picture. And the length is 100 feet less than three times its width. So let's let this be the act width. We'll just say x is the width. So 100 feet less than three times the width would be 3x minus 100. And it says 360 feet of fencing is required to enclose the backyard. Okay, so that's all the way around is 360. Um, so that's, or you can think of perimeter 
as being 360. And a rectangle, opposite sides are equal. So if I add up all four sides, I get, or I should get 360. Okay, so then x and x, and then 3 and 3, so that's 6, 7, 8x minus 200 is equal to 360. Um, and so we have 8x is equal to 560, or x is equal to 70. Now, be careful here um, that you answer the question. Um, and so they want the dimensions. So x is 70, which means this is 3 times 70 minus 100, which is 110. So it's 70 feet by 110 feet. Okay, let's shift gears a little bit and look at an interest example. So this one's kind of tricky. So he's got two accounts. He's got a 3% account and a 7% account. And then we know about both of them. Um, so first with interest, we can find simple interest. Interest is equal to the rate times the amount. This would be a common theme. And the setup of this equation or this problem is we have a total. So let's identify that. That's the total interest is over here. So let's just put this as equal to total. And so if the total is made up of the interest from the account one. So what you make from account one, and we're going to put this in a box, plus what you make from account two is equal to the total. And these are all interest, total interest. So what do we know? Well, we know the total interest is 810. So let's just get that down and out of the way. Do we know how much he makes in account one? Well, I know interest is rate times the amount invested or amount in the account for just very simple interest. Um, so 3% is the rate. So I know 0.03. And then let's leave the amount as it is. Same thing for account two. I'm going to do the rate as the amount. And I know 0.07 is the rate. And then let's think about, see so if we can figure out what the amount is. So the amount invested at the higher rate was 3,000 more than the amount invested at the lower rate. Okay, so say the lower rate was X. Let's put X is equal to the amount... at lower rate. Okay, so that makes the higher rate 3,000 more, so x plus 3,000. And now you have an equation you can solve. So take a minute, back up a little bit, rewatch that. We're using this idea that rate times amount is total interest. So I, I'm finding the interest in account one with 0.03 times x, and the interest in account two with all of this, and then you can solve. Okay, so uh, this is just 0.03x, and then we have 0.07x, and then plus, um, it's two, it'd be 210. And then we can add these together to get, uh, I guess it'd be 0.1, and then subtract the 210 over to get 600. And so then X is 6,000. Okay, so then that is the amount in this 3%. So let's say he invested uh, $6,000 at 3%. And then he, made, he invested 3,000 more. So that's $9,000 at 7%. Okay, and this is a tough question. Whoops, I need to move that up. This is a tough question, um, but it's one you need to be able to do. So take some time and, and rewatch that. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, so this is a similar type question. So let's kind of look at it the same way. Uh, let's find a total first. So your return is 331.25. Um, and the first account was 11%, and the second account was 9%. So 0.1, and we don't know how much yet. We'll just leave some space, and then 0.09. It says you invested half of the money in a fund paying 11%, and one-eighth of the money in a fund paying 9%. And then how much money did you receive? So... <clears throat> half of the money would just be um, 0.5 times X, where X is the money from graduation. And then eighth of the money, we'll just do one eighth times X. Okay, so there's your equation. Uh, and take a minute to solve that. So we do 0 0.11 times 0 0.5, it's 0.055x, and 0 0.09 divided by 8, it's 0.01125x, <clears throat> that was 331.25. And you can add those together. And then divide. So you receive $5,000 at graduation. And that is um, what they asked for there. Okay, so this is a tough, um, these are tough problems. I would take the time to rewatch some of these, rework some of these, and then continue on to the next video. Oops.